Hello lovelies, hello family, this is Kimberly Purpose and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to go ahead and do the continuation to um, the uh, Dinosaurs and Dragons um, video. This is going to be part number two. Uh, the title of this particular article is called Dinosaurs and Dragons. Oh my. The Stanford fossil historian links dinosaur bones to mythological creatures. Um, it was written by the humanities at Stanford University and was published in 2008. And so I found this article to be quite interesting because it's um, based on uh, both myth mythological uh, mythology uh, it's also based on folklore of ancient uh, people globally. And I, you know, and I just thought this was a really neat article. And um, also they touch on the American Aborigines. We didn't get to that point in this, uh, in the first video because I've been having problems with the internet. <laughs> so um, I had to break it up into two parts. But um, I might yeah, I might do another video. I found another article um, and another I'm going to probably do another part, but it's going to be on a different article that I found. But anyway, let's get to the point here. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, part one, you may want to go back and read it because I'm going to start off where we left off in this particular video. And uh, in this video, um, I wanted to share this picture of Dragon. Uh, let me see. It's a picture of a drag, dragochorus, drag, dragochorus. Yeah, that's the proper pronunciation. Uh, this is the finding fossils that they found of the dinosaur that resembles a dragon. They looks, have a lot of the similarities. And they had a scientist by the name of Adrian Major to go ahead and do some more research and explore the connection uh, between uh, folklore and the stories of, of the folklore of the dragons by the ancient people, by indigenous people as well, and, um, and how it is applied to the science of anthropology and Paleontology. I'm sorry, paleontology. I get on top. But anyway, let's drill down to the part where we left off. Uh, let's see. We left off right in here. Yeah. I believe it was this paragraph right here. It says Major, a scholar of classic and history of science, has spent years looking at the link between paleontology. And, and findings and the dragon myth that populated many ancient and medieval religions and cultures and survived even today. Major's latest publication, Fossils Legends of the First Americans, correlates Native Americans' myth, myths with the fossils they are known or presumed to be observed. So I want to also mention, I didn't get to that point in the first video, that the indigenous aborigines also had um, folklores about the dragons and many stories. And, and it, although they say Native American, they also definitely had some from the American aborigines, who is a distinct group um, that were also here in the Americas that's oftentimes um, overlooked or not written properly in the history books. But in this video, we're going to include the American Aborigines. I found an interesting article because the American Aborigines, um, I'm going to show you, I believe it's this pen. Um, let me go back over here. These are some of the pictures of the um, indigenous American Aborigines and Native Americans that, that um, of the dragons, and these, these are how they how it look. <laughs> the American dragons that they had, the other ancients, the ancient people had. And this one in particular is the Pisa, Pisa. Um, that's by the American Aborigines for sure. I'm gonna bring you back over here to the Pinterest. This goes to this Pinterest over here. 
but the picture is so big, it's right in here. But it's the same picture. I'm going to bring it back over here. It's the same picture as this one right here. But they're talking about the PSA. I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It says here, the PSA is a Native American dragon depicted on the bluffs above the Mississippi River. In the 1673, Father Jacques Marquette uh, saw the painting and stated, we saw two painted monsters which made us afraid, largest calves, horns, like a deer, horrible red eyes, beard like tigers, face like a man covered with scouts, a tail that winds, winds, around, winds around the body, ends in a fish tail. Red, green, black are the three colors composed in the pictures. Here is the shape as we are faithfully copied it. So these are the pictures that the indigenous people have drawn of these creatures. Um, and oftentimes people say this is mythology, but um, it says the Mississippi River. If it's in the Mississippi River, it's definitely the American Aborigines. That's the East Coast, uh, the southern part of the Americas, where the indigenous people actually live. So I just wanted to share with you all that, yes, the Native Americans also had dragons as well in their Amer in their uh, folklores and mythology as well, just like um, other cultures globally. So I want to make sure I include that. Um, I did find an article about the American Aborigines and the folklores on the dragons. And um, I'm not going to do it in this video. We're not going to have time. But I make sure I do a third video on it to share it with you guys. But it says here, um, she's talking about the Native Americans, the American Aborigines. The first American is the American Aborigines. And the second wave is the Native American, uh, the Native Americans, which are the Mongoloids. And in the uh, American Aborigines are the Australian arts, uh with Negro features. But anyway, it says Major continued her keen interest of paleontology with abundance of long forgotten literacy, artistic and paleological evidence to support her thesis that at least one, some of the fan, fantastic mythological monsters were based on paleontology pale, Tology <laughs> realities. According to Mayor Mayo, here's the Sue sitting, as you mentioned, the Sue, who found a skull like Draco, uh, Draco Rex, might have identified it as you can't, uh, you can't, uh, the mythical horn water monster of South Dakota Bandlands where the fossils, fossil was on earth. She continued, Dracoites helped us understand how fossils of mysterious, mysterious extinct animals may have inspired ancient people around the world to believe that dragons and other fabulous creatures once lived. Like modern paleontologists, fossil, fossil hunters in antiquity, Try to explain the appearance and behavior of the creatures whose bones they found. Yes, but um, there is also a theory. Um, yeah, I may want to check out the Gaia channel. I'm going to watch the documentary because they said that there's a possibility. They believe that the humans were there with the dinosaurs because they said they found human footprint alongside the dinosaurs. So I don't know how true that is, but... I'm going to watch that documentary and probably do a little research myself to see if that's true. But that's like I said, it's some of it speculation and um, some people are digging. A lot of scientists are researching the topic. And yeah, but I think it's interesting that the indigenous people were studying the bones too, just like the scientists that they were trying to get a better understanding of these um, prehistoric animals, uh, these uh, cold-blooded reptiles reptiles that were roaming the earth there were giants huge creatures that uh, was on this planet prior to humanity but um, some people still believe that humans were here along with dinosaurs but um, like i said um, they're still doing studies and research on that too 
bring it to light. And it says here, Adrian Mayer is an independent scholar who investigates scientific realities embedded in myth and classical antiquity. Her research look at ancient folk science, precursors, alternatives, and parallels to modern scientific methods. Mayer's book, The First Fossil Hunters, Paleontology in Greek and Roman Times, and fossil legends of the first Americans, which is the American Aborigines, open a new field within gem mythology. She is active in classical folklore and an independent scholar in Stanford's classic department in the history of philosophy of science and technology program. Interesting. Yes, 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 yes. And, um, I'm going to look up the Unateki for the Sioux Indian. I'm going to see what their dragons look like. <laughs> this is it looks similar to the um, the other Indians, the near the Mississippi uh, River, um, the Southeast Woodlands, in other words. Let's see if the uh, dragon look any similar to each other. Well, let's draw it down. It says here, Dragon on Earth, which opened the Children's Museum of Indianapolis on September 18, 2008, highlights the information that helped to explain how fossils of mysterious extinct animals may have inspired ancient people around the world to believe that dragons and the other fabulous creatures once lived. Many paleontologists today believe that there might be a link between the mythological creatures ancient people believed to be dragons and discovery of dinosaur fossils. Dragons on Earth is a family-friendly based exhibit center that explores the mythology between dragons using the true dinosaur facts. And then here they put more information about this um, museum. Uh, Dragons on Earth, the Children's Museum, and it might be an interesting uh, tour or a trip that you could take your kids on so they can have a better understanding about these um, prehistoric animals and see what it was all about and have a better understanding about both science and history and as well and understanding human history through mythology and folklore and learning the, uh, the truth between what is myth and what is reality. But this is going to be a conclusion of this video. Next time, I'm going to go further and dig and give you more information about the Mississippi and the Indians, the Indians on the southeast of the Americas and within the United States, um, uh, where they, what their uh, story is about the dragons and how their dragons look during that time period. You know, um, what was their portrayal of the um, of these particular creatures? What did they think? Were they good or bad? And how um, how it relates to history? But uh, please like this video, you guys. And uh, to next time, love and peace. And uh, please don't forget to um, like this video and subscribe. And also check out my website. But my counseling center, Purpose Counseling and Wellness. I also have a goal for me, uh, um, Patreon, and a um, a goal for me, and a Patreon, and a PayPal. Uh, Y'all can check that out. And I also, um, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you guys. You know, just um, leave your comments below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Bye-bye. Love and peace.